The Boy That Could Fly by Stephen Billington That morning began like any other morning in the small town of Hartley. The rooster woke everyone just as the sun began to shine across the countryside, and slowly the morning dew began to melt. There was no indication that something special would happen today. No sign in the sky, no trumpeting horns, no arrival of messengers from afar. Nothing. Not the slightest indication. Slowly the house started to come to life. Emma rubbed her eyes, clearing the sleep from the corners, stretched her legs, and wondered if she lay here long enough, perhaps they would just forget about her today. The dream she had been having seemed still so vivid in her mind. The face of the boy so familiar, and yet foreign to her. If only she could remember his name. Suddenly, getting out of bed seemed like a good thing to do. Throwing back the duvet, she jumped out of bed and rushed towards the windows, peering out across the rooftops and up skywards, as if something was about to drop from the heavens into her world. What was she looking for? Something nagged at her memory. Something about the dream. Something was different, but she could not put her finger on it. Em, are you up? Slowly, Emma's thoughts drifted back to earth. Yes, Mum, be down in a minute. Even though Emma knew that something was different, for now she quickly continued about her morning routine. Jumping into her favourite dungarees and her yellow boots, she rushed downstairs for breakfast, tripping over Zoya on the landing and colliding with the hall dresser. Zoya had a nasty habit of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was not a cat of habit and would choose the most illogical places to curl up and go to sleep. Zoya, get out of here! Good morning, Em. Did you sleep well? Rubbing her bruised knee, Emma looked across the hall into the dining room, where Mrs. Nicholson, the housekeeper of some twenty years, was busy arranging toasted Copenhagen's into a neat pyramid at the centre of the dining table. Emma had always been fond of Nanny and even at her age, wondered what she would do if she was not around. Nanny had been her accomplice in many an ingenious plot. Countless escapes from certain harm and the fall guy on many other failed missions. Morning, Nan. Have you seen where Zoya has decided to sleep today? Well, it's better than getting his paw stuck in the toaster again. Emma was ravenous. Her bruising encounter with Zoya soon forgotten, she was ready to tuck into the neatly stacked pile of Copenhagen's, which Nanny had left unattended. Swinging herself onto the closest dining chair, she started to reach for her first bun, but stopped halfway, as she noticed that across the table from her was another place setting. Nobody usually ate breakfast with her. Nan, is somebody else eating with me this morning? As if in answer to Emma's question, a young boy appeared at the dining room doorway, looking about nervously. Gran, are you here? Emma had never seen a boy like him before. He wore a long brown coat, which hung well below his knees, big leather boots which looked at least two sizes too big for his feet, a blue knitted polo net jersey and a bright red scarf around his neck. He was red in the face, which did not surprise Emma, as even at eight in the morning the temperature was already climbing, and with that amount of clothing on, she was sure he might faint any second. His piercing blue eyes locked onto hers. Hello. I'm Nicholas. You must be Emma. Gran said I would meet you at breakfast. Mrs. Nicholson poked her head around the corner of the kitchen door. Oh, Emma, this is Nicholas, my nephew. He will be staying with us for the duration of the summer holidays. I was hoping you would show him around a little. Emma was crestfallen. It had only been minutes since she was so enthusiastically jumping out of bed, ready to take on the world and now she had been lumped with some strange-looking boy that she had to cart around with her for what sounded now like a very long summer holiday. Hello, Nicholas. Pleased to meet you. Would you like a Copenhagen? Nicholas seemed almost to float into the room and sit down at the dining table, helped himself to an enormous bun, and while stuffing half the bun into his mouth, gazed over at Emma and proceeded to talk, 
Bleach. Emma stared in disgust. Half of what he had stuffed into his mouth was back on the dining room table. Excuse me, could you repeat that without a mouthful of food? Can we go to the beach? Emma just stared back at Nicholas for a moment, lost in thought, trying to think of some way in which she could be rid of the boy. I have promised Miss Flem, she is our neighbour, that I would help clean out her pantry this morning. I don't know how long it is going to take, but maybe when I am finished we could go down to the beach. Nicholas looked a little disappointed. Sure, plenty of time for the beach later. I'll just hang around the house this morning and read. Gran doesn't like me wandering off by myself. Emma had never known Mrs. Nicholson to be the overprotective sort, so she found it surprising that Nicholas was not allowed out by himself. Unless, of course, he was prone to accident, and from the look of him, that would not be surprising. Feeling a little guilty, Emma relented. I will try and get finished as quickly as possible so we can go down to the beach early. Nicholas beamed.